Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? So thank you very much uh, for having me tonight, being the last guy um, on your trip through the transformation. And I had the luck to... It's quite... I had the luck to um, hear some of the speakers. Um, so far, we were talking about uh, cyborgs and the AI. We were talking about the future of work and what the environment for the digital natives is all about. We were talking about the digital natives, the new generations. We were talking about digital transformation, uh, which the lady from Adidas did in a, in a very fan in a fantastic way. Um, I'll come back to that later. Um, we were talking about VR and AR, and we were talking about smart cities, just the speaker before me. I want to now connect all these things, because what has that all together, what has that in common? And you know, it has in common the topics brand. And I work in the brand and branding industry in that field for more than 20 years, and I think that it's of highly relevant for most of the people here, because you are startups, you want to grow your business, or you already have your business, or you work in corporations and big corporations, and the brand is that what afflicts, what is afflicted by all of those technologies. What do I mean by that? You know, everything that we were talking about today will change the way we think about brands, will change the way we interact with them, will, think, uh, will change the way we perceive brands. And to give you a little example is, when you woke up this morning, you know, you will be directly interactive with brands. You know, either your iPhone woke you up or your Android woke you up, and then you went to the bathroom and you had some, you had some toothbrushing, and then you took your cereals and all that kind of stuff. So, so Brands are all around you, and they are all around you constantly, if you want it or not, okay? And they are trying to communicate with you, and you're interactive with them. So, but let's step back a little bit, and let's step back. It's not that far in the past. It's like 10 years, okay? 10 years ago, brands sold us their dreams, okay? They were like, they, they were like um, their stories, and we were obeying to the brands, we as humans, and we bought them. Okay, I, I want to give you a little, a little example about that. That's a little bit far ahead, in, uh, far back in the, in the history. It was when I was seven years old. So that was still in the 70s, okay? So it was 1978, and uh, my grandfather, he brought me some shoes from New York, okay? By that time, it was no globalization. I've never left the country, I've never left Germany. So coming back to Adidas, there were only sneakers where Adidas and Puma. Okay, and what brought he with was some Converse shoes. And as soon as I put them on and I was touching ground with them, I felt like walking through New York. Okay, it was the fantastic, it was the best experience I've ever had in my whole life, even though the shoes sucked. But you know, it was, it was the experience that I had with it because it was, it was the dream or it was the, the idea and the vision that Nike or Converse tried to sell me. There were other brands as well, like Campbell, the cigarette industry, where they were big at it, you know, we all were cowboys by that time, of course, yeah, or we were adventurous guys. And of course, we all were fantastic athletes. As soon as you put on Nike shoes, you can do a slam dunk no matter how, okay? But that changed, and that changed like 10 to 12 years ago when the first iPhone was introduced. It's not because of Apple, but what happened was that out of the sudden, we were in control. And that being in control meant that we have the freedom and the power to now really tell brands and really fulfill our own dreams. And this is what changed, you know. We are now changing our, uh, changing our own dreams, okay? We are now have our own ideas. We now have our own lifestyle. Every one of you has a very different lifestyle, okay? And we all do what? We are chasing our own dreams. And what do we do with the brands? You know, in the past, brands, they sold us their dreams. Now, brands have to fulfill my dreams. Okay, another little story to that. I got married in uh, Las Vegas not that, that long ago, okay? And um, I wanted to take a bike ride, the last bike ride in freedom. And I wanted to ride the Route 66. So I called BMW because I'm quite close with BMW. So I called them and I said, listen, I need a bike in, the, in, in an hour, okay? Can you please bring the bike to the hotel? I want to go for a ride. Uh, the answer was, uh, no, we can't. Okay, story's dead. No, it wasn't. I called Harley Davidson. I said, okay, not a problem. In 45 minutes, you will get delivered the bike in front of your hotel. Fantastic. Okay, so the thing was, they brought the bike. And what I want to point out is that even though I'm quite, I'm quite brand loyal, I didn't care about the brand anymore because I wanted to fulfill my freedom ride, my last freedom ride on Route 66 before I got married and Harley-Davidson made that possible for me.
fantastic, okay? So, there are other brands, and we've heard about that. We've heard about um, the Airbnb, the, 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 the communities, the stories about Airbnb, which is fantastic. They fulfill my dreams. I go to another place. It's not the brand Airbnb. They are a community, and they help me. They build the relation to encourage me to go everywhere and feel safe and home and welcome. Or other brands like Nike, Adidas is doing the same. So they are doing that also in a fantastic way. Or Amazon, they're also doing that. You know, not in that scale or, not, or on another level because whenever you want to shop something, you can do that. Okay, it's no matter the closing time, no matter what, they will have it and they will do it. So they are highly relevant to me as well. So the thing is, today it's the relevance and the content. And we've heard that before a couple of times, okay? And I will come back to that later. So why I'm telling you all that? And we've also heard that before. It's the customer ecosystem, okay? It's from coming from the product perspective, from the brand perspective. They told us how we should do and how, what we should do and what kind of products they have. It's now all about us. And they try to sneak in to our ecosystem. And they, when they are not relevant in our ecosystem, then they are not relevant. That they, then they do not exist for me. Okay, that's, that's, that's the main theory about that. So what's next? My presentation is called The Death of a Salesman. And why do I call it The Death of a Salesman? Because there was a time, like 20 years ago, when brand, and I don't know brands, they were really visionary. Okay, that, that the brand was the idea behind the whole corporation. And they had the vision. They were responsible for what kind of products, what kind of services, where the business opportunities, where the fields we're going to, okay? So that was what a brand was all about. But in today's world, what is the brand all about? They degenerated to being the lever for sales. Because most of the time, or in, in today's time, it's all about the product units you're going to sell. And you know what? Most of the companies, what they say is, if something is not selling well, yeah, maybe we need another logo, or maybe we need another color, or maybe we need something, you know, we have to push sales. So maybe not the product is wrong, because that might be difficult, because then you have to think about it. So no, the advertising must be wrong, the color must be wrong, the corporate design must be wrong, so we are changing the soft factors, okay? And we are constantly degenerating the, the, the brand itself. You know, and to point that out, you know, it's not only the industry or the corporations, it's even my field, you know, it's the, it's the people who are working in the brand and branding industry, if they are not changing, then they will also be dead. So let's say death of a salesman, the salesman is now the brand. Okay, so now I have like 10 statements about that. Might be a little bit rude, but you know, that's what statements all about. So come in here. I'm not a big guy when it comes to shopping, especially not grocery or when I go to a warehouse or something like that. So nobody, does anybody need that much choice, really? Having two or three or four, you know, um, places where you can buy cereals and stuff like that? Have you ever tried to buy shampoo? You know, okay, then maybe the brand gives you some lighthouse. Okay, and then you say, okay, I take that brand. But those brands, you know what they are doing? They are diversifying. There's not only one shampoo from that brand, there are another 30. Okay, so now best of luck. Okay, so that's the point where they, where, they, where they just lose me. So I say nobody needs that much choice and that leads, therefore, that you need relevant, relevant products and relevant services, okay, to really step out of the crowd. The next thing is that in my understanding, consumerism is on its way out, which means that yes, of course, you can buy happiness. And I even do that, you know, if you buy something, then you're happy for five minutes. But, you know, even that is slowly getting away. But what stays is relevance, community, and experience. So if you cannot experience something, so you're, you're looking for experiences, and you spend money on experiences, not anymore so much on products, you spend them on experiences. And if something has no real experience or no real value to what you emotionally want to, want to feel, then, you know, you're not buying it, okay? So the next thing, we want ownership or we want access over ownership, which makes totally sense, and we've heard that a couple of times before, which makes totally sense in the field of business mobility or in the field of mobility, okay? But there are several other, other fields as well, because if you talk about the digital natives and all those kind of people, they don't even have a Führerschein, they don't even have a driving license. So why do they need mobility? Even they don't see mobility as I saw it. You know, as I said before, I grew up in the 70s, okay? 
So mobility meant freedom to me. For them, mobility just means a lot of payment, you know, a lot of you know, money that is spent that parks in the garage that's not used for 22 hours a day and so on and so forth. So access over ownership is a big thing that will come and not only in the mobility industry. The other thing, out of sight, out of mind. And this for me is one of the crucial parts that will, that will form the brand and branding industry in the next years because we have no such thing as getting in touch visually with a brand anymore. And you remember what I said before? At the moment, brand and branding most of the time is all about logos and visuals and about how a website looks like and all that kind of stuff. But if I talk with OK Google or if I talk with my Alexa, there is no such thing as the website from Adidas. I just tell Alexa, listen, Alexa, I want to have a sneaker. Maybe I don't even say I want an Adidas sneaker because she already knows that I want a Nike sneaker. So I, I just say, you know, I want a sneaker. So the thing is, there is no connection anymore between brands and me because my partner, Alexa or Google, is taking the choice for me. That's, very, that's, a, very, that's a thing that will hit the market very intensely. Then the I'm special and I'm just like everybody else. Luckily, I don't see so many that do bearded hipsters, you know, because this is something, this is something which also is the brands afflicting very much. You remember when I was talking about the relevance and you have to make products that are relevant and that have a fantastic service, okay? Now what they are doing, they're going the easy way, okay? Now they try to sneak in into the lifestyle and they are doing it, everyone is doing it with those kind of people, you know? They always show you people like that. They show you in the advertising, they show you bearded guys with tattoos, they are cool hanging around, you know? Everybody is using that kind of, of picture to, 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 to get into your ecosystem and to get um, to know you better, okay? then globalization enforces conformity. That's a big one as well. Globalization was something that struck the, the brand industry and the, uh, and, the, and, the brand, and the brands very hard because during globalization, we needed to scale a brand very fast all over the world, which meant that it has to look everywhere the same because we just took a role model and then we just placed it all over the world, okay? Here, for example, H&M. The downside that we have right now is, now being a global, pe a global person traveling the world, when I go to Shanghai, you know, Nanjing Road looks like if I go to uh, Munich or if I go to New York or if I go to Rome or if I go to, you know, there is no differentiation anymore. But people are looking for that. People are looking not for conformity. People are looking for something that is special and that gives them that gives them inspiration and creativity, okay? And the other thing is, even a brand like H&M, and you've read that in the news, you know, now they are struck by online business from other brands as well. So their sales are dropping, then you have one or two bad um, collections, and out of the sudden, boom, 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 you're gone. So let's see what's happening with H&M, and that's a really huge corporation. So the time in which we're in, you know, big is not, not anymore a guarantee for not dying, okay? So, the other thing is that friends tell you what you have to buy or what you don't have to buy. With the whole thing of Instagram and with the whole thing of the, of the, of the staging of brands and the, the Kardashians and all that kind of stuff, you don't, you don't even trust that anymore. You don't even trust your friends anymore because brands are now buying those kind of people to tell you what kind of toothbrush you have to use. Also a weird thing, so if you don't trust brands anymore on that, on that level and even if you don't trust your friends anymore, then you know we are deep shit and we have problems with brands anyhow. This we were talking about as well, because we humans can react much faster than um, corporations. And um, my fourth speaker from Adidas, she said it very right, okay, if you're not doing it in a full scale, on a very fast speed, if you are not adopting processual or functional, or if you're not coping with the people, then you know, then it's over. Because if you look, if you look at, the, at the production time of certain products and the development time and all of that kind of stuff, you know, if you're not adapting to technologies and to new kind of ways of thinking, then it's very difficult for your brand to survive. The other thing is the blockchain. Blockchain might be also very interesting when it comes to brands, especially 
because they are cutting the middleman. Okay, so now all the brands like an Amazon or a WeChat, they are now in, I would say, in danger or like something like Airbnb. Why do you need Airbnb anymore? You know, because I can directly connect with people all over the world and it gives me some kind of security and, you know, it gives me the freedom to do it without any kind of middleman. So that might be a, a technology that will also very much afflict brands. In my understanding, it's a little bit like the internet like 25 years ago. And they are all cannibals. All corporations are cannibals, okay? There was a time when the big corporations were eating the small corporations. Then there was a time when the fast corporations were eating the slow corporations. And now it's back to the time that the big corporations, they buy the smart corporations. They buy all of you, all the startups, because they want to do what? First of all, they want to have your knowledge. They want to have your technology. They want to know what you know. They want to use that as a weapon, not only to use it against other corporations, but also to get rid of competition. Of course, they, want not, you, they don't want you as a competition. And there's one thing. There will be only a few companies. And everybody of new WeChat, is that a, do you know WeChat? Okay, WeChat is a thing. You can easily spend a whole day without leaving the WeChat cosmos because you can do everything with it. You can shop, you can buy, you can, you can do anything. And that's incredible. So there will be only a few mammoth corporations and they will control your whole ecosystem, okay? So bringing that all together gives me, I would say, the right or the conclusion to say brands will die like we're all going to die. Some of them will die sooner or vanish away and the others don't. Of course, they will not die literally and they will not be gone tomorrow. But if you look at all of that and if you combine that with the speed that happened during the last 12 years, some of the companies, especially if they are not aware of the transformation that they have to do, not only in terms of we buy a new computer, but in terms of internal processes, they will not make it. It's a very crucial time at the moment, especially in the brand and branding industry. So, but there are a few points that could be done. And this is something I want to talk about when it comes to the future of brand agencies, okay? Because it's not about the visualization anymore. It's about taking care that our clients have relevance, that they get back to that, that a brand is more than just lipstick on a pig. You know, it's about meaningfulness and it's about the right products and the right services. And we have to stand for that and say, don't think about color. Think about what you want to do and why you're going to do it, okay? The second thing is that we have to treat them and tell them that they have to build relationships and they have to put all their efforts into experiences. Because if you have a positive experience with something, you will tell your friends, and of course, you will always get back to that positive experience. And the third thing is, and that's, I pointed out before, we need to bring back character, okay? Because most of the corporations really, do they have a face? Do they have character? Do they stand for anything instead, instead of selling products? We have to take care that they have a character, Okay, not everybody will like you, but if you have a character, and my fourth speaker um, from um, R&B said it, if you have a hundred fans that love you instead of a million, they, you know, something like that, I would take the hundred. So it's, 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 it's necessary to have character, and we have to tell them that they not only have to change the way they look, but also the way they have to behave. Thank you very much.